The Beatles' relationship with producer George Martin is often portrayed as one of mutual support and kindness, and for the most part, it was. However, in the early days, Martin attempted to sneak a song past the Beatles and was turned down twice. This is a story about a song named How Do You Do It that Martin attempted to force on the Beatles as their first single and, failing that, their second. The Fab Four had different ideas, which was a good thing because who knows how music history would have changed otherwise. Before we get into the story of How Do You Do It, it's important to note that the Beatles were not in high demand as a group when they joined with EMI Records. They had been turned down by various labels before landing a deal in 1962. In other words, they didn't start out strong in their relationship with the label. Fortunately, they found an immediate fan in EMI Parlophone's in-house producer, George Martin. Martin appreciated their sense of humor and cheekiness. But Martin wasn't so convinced about John Lennon and Paul McCartney's songwriting ability, at least not at the time. The Beatles' first recording sessions with Martin were already filled with turmoil when Ringo Starr arrived to drum. Martin stood firm. Because no one had informed him that the new Beatles star was on the way, he chose a session player named Alan White. Martin thought Starr struggled in the first session and demoted him to playing the tambourine. Martin was going to fight one more battle against the band, and it turned out to be much more difficult for him. At this period in music history, it was extremely rare for a rock and roll band to create their own material. These were still the days when professional composers created the songs, which were then collected by music publishers and pitched to bands. George Martin did not believe the approach would be any different with the Beatles. As previously said, Martin was more struck with the group's personalities than their musical ability. And the original tunes they provided him didn't really impress him. Martin believed he had a secret advantage. He has a demo of a song titled how Do You Do It, composed by songwriter for hire Mitch Murray. The song was polished and light on its feet, the type of music that worked well on the pop charts at the time. Martin thought it was a surefire hit, the ideal way to start this new band. But John Lennon and Paul McCartney had different plans. For Martin, during the initial recording session, doing it in a fairly perfunctory manner. Their attitude paid off as Love Me Do was chosen as the debut single. It was a minor hit in the United Kingdom, just making the top 20. The Beatles intended to record Please Please Me for release as their second single. Martin had heard them go through the song before, and he thought the speed was too slow for a single. He again proposed that the Beatles release How Do You Do It instead. But the band took his advice and composed a faster version of Please Please Me. When Martin heard it, he famously predicted that it would be the band's first no one single, and he was correct. When the Beatles passed on it, he gave it to Jerry and the Pacemakers, another Liverpool band. Their version closely resembled the Fab Four's demo and debuted at number one in the United States and the United Kingdom. In other words, it was always the perfect song, but it started with the wrong band, 